We're here at the Small Business here, Expo, and we thought we'd uh, take this opportunity to um, talk to Rod Drury. Rod Drury is the um, co-founder and CEO of Xero. Xero being a uh, SaaS accounting uh, provider in Wellington, New Zealand. So Rod, I've got a couple of, um, couple of introduction questions for you. Um, the first one is why accounting, and the second one is why SaaS. Cool. So, so having done a number of small business owners, uh, having a number of small businesses myself, I knew that um, the fundamental problem of small business accounting was broken. It was a very a disconnected model, and it was one that really I thought we thought that we could fix with the web. The stepping back, when we looked at, we were just stunned when we saw the size of the market. 95% of all businesses are small businesses, and if you look at the big technology providers, you know, Oracle, Sun, IBM, uh, SAP, they sell nothing to that huge market. So um, we thought, well, that's kind of interesting. So clearly, the cost of sales and cost of support in that model is, is, is just too much, and it hasn't been economic for them to get to the market. If you flip it around, though, you have to also say then that small businesses really haven't had the power of technology applied to them yet. And uh, you know, that we think that's, uh, that's uh, uh, just one of the biggest market opportunities which is there. So then we said, um, OK, well, what do they all do? They all have bank accounts. The smart ones have business advisors, they have a relationship with the tax authority. So then we said, okay, well, you know, even though accounting probably isn't all, all that glamorous, we saw it as a beachhead application for getting technology into small businesses. And what we've noticed since we've been doing zero is that if you um, look at the existing desktop accounting model, it's quite a different business to online. You know, desktop accounting, it's retrospective, it's back office only, um, it's disconnected. When you move um, onto an online accounting platform, it becomes the centre of the small business. So a good example of that is, um, you know, once you have accounts receivable, accounts payable, you've got suppliers and customers, therefore a little bit of CRM, you know, you can look at procurement, all sorts of interesting things start coming around that featured application. So, you know, accounting and SaaS, we think it's the biggest opportunity in the world. So it's all about aggregation? Yeah, it's about um, but ag aggregation in a really positive way. It's being able to get the sort of technologies a multinational would expect down to small businesses, which are the powerhouse of uh, all economies. So, you know, it's a very positive thing, and technology allows us to get that, to just get it out in a cost-effective way. Okay. I see that you've, you're really targeting the Australasian and the UK market. Um, I mean, obviously, you've made a decision to do that. Why not the US, given the powerhouse of, of, of where the stuff's yeah. happening? Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's a really good question. So, um, the reason we looked at, at New Zealand first is obviously we're here, we understand the market, and it's one that we can go out and test and you know, work with the value proposition that, uh, is. And we also didn't have the time to just take three years and build a perfect system all from day one. So we picked the subset, and this was a good market to start, learn, get the lessons, and really over a short, short amount of time, we really built up both the product and also a uh, whole lot of experience, which is valuable for us. Um, from from um, our New Zealand base, the next logical country is the UK. Uh, we have good networks over there, the tax system, the accounting rules, all those sort of things. There's a lot of uh, cross fertilisation, and Australia um, is, a, is, is a logical one after that as well. Probably a bit more compl complex with some of the um, uh, of the compliance requirements we have in UK and Australia, but, but uh, in the UK and New Zealand, but a good step forward. Compare that to the US. The US is really quite different. You know, um, there's the two-tier tax structure, uh, and it's a very competitive market. You know, there's lots more activity going on over there. So we were quite happy to be outside of the US, and when our as a product gets better, you know, that's an obvious market we may get to at some point. I see that you're involved as an, as an angel and a mentor in, 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 in a number of a number of businesses, and a couple of those are quite quite slow burn businesses. Zero is obviously not a slow burn business. You know, your IPO you spent um, going you know, on five million dollars in the first year. Why does it have to be such a high burn model? Um, one of the things I noticed when I, my last business was acquired by Quest Software in the US, we saw what a, what a full-scale software development business looked like. And I really believe to do things uh, properly in some markets, and I think accounting is one of those applications you have to do properly. There's a certain amount of feature set, there's a certain amount of support, and there's a certain amount of things you actually have to have infrastructure, you know, connections to the banks, do um, specific features for each country. And we thought that critical mass of a, of a real software company uh, that was going to go global was about 40 to 50 people. So you start adding up that salary bill every month, 
We also know that we're well ahead of the curve. You know, the SAS wave is just catching up. We're going into a you know very hard space. Small businesses, you know, they're not they're not used to lots of change. So you have to fund the business for that period of time. And we also with SAS, as you're only charging a small monthly fee, you're not getting the upfront licenses. So to get the equivalent revenue and selling licenses, you have to fund that all as well. So you start adding that up. It takes uh, you know 10 or 15 million bucks. And what's been interesting is that we've seen that a number of smaller providers who have tried to do it in an underfunded way just haven't made it. And there's been a number of businesses selling through the UK at the moment. And uh, you know this, this, these businesses do require cash. So what we've done is we've invested in the platform. We've built the best team we could. And I think it's stunning how much we've delivered in the last year. And now uh, it's all about throwing customer numbers at that platform. And you know, we feel really good about it. Okay. Moving on to pricing and revenue, um, you know, Chris Anderson from Wide Magazine has, has famously talked about the, the trend towards towards zero, zero with a Z, not with an X. Um, you know, obviously, in, in the, the past 12 months, we've seen the, the subscription price of zero cut by by a third as a, as a um, consequence of market market factors, factors. I guess the question is, how much pressure is there going forward on that on that price point? Um, what we had to do was make sure with all the software and service businesses that you get customers out there and it wasn't so much the product, uh, we, we cut the um, price of the product, we looked at various markets like the um, uh, the not-for-profits and saw those as a really good place to receive really zero <laughs> and get it out there. Um, what we were planning to do last year was um, we were planning to deliver on some value-added applications over the top. But the feedback we had last year was really focused on getting the core accounting bit right. So we haven't delivered the uh, features that will see the, 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 the um, uh, greater average revenue per customer. And that's what we'll do over the next year. And we're really excited about that. So we don't really see price as a major barrier. It's not a major objection we get. Um, well, one of the challenges is to um, make sure that people understand all of the benefits and it's very easy to compare a software as a service product with, with buying a box off the shelf, but they're completely different things. So we definitely have to do a much better job about that and you'll see that coming through in the next few months. But there's lots of room to, uh, to grow the market and to certainly grow um, the services that you give to each individual customer as we deliver more and more technology. And they can be in a way that you just keep saving more and more money for this business. See, um, from a few months ago you've, you've, you've launched your API program and you had um, quite a flurry initially of partners come on board um, and that's really great to see and it's, it's obviously um, built the credibility of, of Xero as, as a bit of a, a platform and an aggregator. Um, is there a lot on the horizon in terms of API partners? Oh yeah. Or care to divulge any, any Well, areas? I mean it's a logical thing. So what we're seeing now is all of the of the disciplines and the benefit of uh, electronic data interchange of late 90s, early 2000s, we're now being able to um, aggregate those. And that's one of the really interesting things about software as a service. So rather than every business having connections, the software as a service provider becomes a natural aggregation point. So I mean it's stunning, we've been able to build connections with pretty much all of the major banks in New Zealand, last one just coming on board now, and have a full, you know, um, you know, private network EDI type exchange going and get you know daily bank transactions out to all our small business customers. So then it's natural to look at other things where you can bring all that uh, all of that information through. We've seen some really interesting things happen in the last year. Like one one stunning example is the government's put a lot of effort into um, into synchronising provision of tax payments uh, to GST payments for small business owners. And uh, with all of the effort that they went to um, educate small businesses, only um, you know, two or three hundred businesses in New Zealand took that option up, which is very, it's great for small businesses because it takes a major bit of stress out. And one of the reasons for that is the, is the desktop model where you do your GST and then the sort of back office accountants model where you have the big picture, you have to put those two things together to make those provisional tax calculations and that model is completely broken. Yeah. So the accountants couldn't promote this out to small businesses, but you put all things together and these sort of things happen. So there's some interesting dynamics. You know, we just find that the whole market changes when you move things online and uh, you know, we're pretty excited about that because it's you know, some fundamental assumptions um, being challenged and will change this.